Canon just announced a new sensor that's capable of 25 stops of dynamic range. That's right, that's not a mistake. 25 stops of dynamic range. Can we expect to see this new technology in Canon's upcoming Canon EOS R5 Mark II, or even Canon's flagship camera, the Canon EOS R1? Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor and follow me on Twitter. Subscribe, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that good stuff, as it really helps this channel grow. Just last month, Canon announced a new sensor capable of delivering 25.6 stops of dynamic range. For you video fans, that translates to 24 stops when shooting 4K video at 30 frames per second. And the announced sensor? It's 1 inch and backside illuminated. The increased dynamic range is provided by equipping the image sensor with multiple CPUs and dedicated processing circuitry, enabling it to quickly and simultaneously specify exposure conditions for all 736 areas within the allotted time per frame. It sounds like Canon is combining multiple technologies in a system on a chip, like Apple has done with the new M architecture. Computational power isn't new. It's been with smartphones for a while, allowing them to take much better photos or pictures through software than would be possible using such a small sensor with such a small aperture. And with the Canon EOS R8, we're finally seeing computational capabilities being added to mirrorless cameras. But having computational capabilities built into a sensor, that's new. And to be able to do that with video, well, that's new as well, beating Apple to the punch. So how does this new sensor enable them to be able to process so much incoming data of 4K video up to 30 frames per second and deliver 24 stops of dynamic range, which is a huge improvement over today's stills hybrid cameras. Canon says that they're dividing up the sensor into regions and that allows for proper exposure of all parts of the image in challenging lighting conditions. This also reduces the amount of data processing and enables high speed image capture at speeds of approximately 60 frames per second with a pixel count of 12.6 megapixels. This allows the sensor to process exposure to different parts of the frame independently, just like DP review shows here only with shooting stills. And this is done with the Canon EOS R50. So are we going to see the sensor in the brand new Canon EOS R5 Mark II or even the Canon EOS R1? No, definitely not. This sensor that Canon has announced is a one inch sensor and they can certainly scale that up. So it's possible that they could take the technology from the sensor. It is a backside illuminated sensor and it's possible that this technology could see itself in the Canon EOS R5. But the R5 is currently 45 megapixels, and if the rumors are to be believed, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, well, it's gonna shoot to 61 megapixels, and the resolution of the sensor is around 13 megapixels, and that's a big jump. That will take definitely some effort in scaling, but who knows, maybe Canon's been doing some work behind the scenes, and they haven't announced everything. So it's definitely possible, again, that we could see them scale this technology to higher resolution sensors. So it's possible, it's possible that this technology could be enhanced or scaled up to cameras like the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or even the Canon EOS R1, perhaps it's possible. They could leverage certain patents, certain discoveries, certain innovations from the sensor and put it into a new sensor that's gonna be designed for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or the R1, but, and this is a big but here, if we take a look at Canon's press release, this is what they have to say about the applications for this sensor. They cite a CCTV scenario, consider a parking garage entrance, consider it's afternoon in bright light. With conventional cameras, the vehicle's license plate is not legible due to, well, whiteout, while the driver's face is not visible due to crushed blacks. However, the new sensor, as they show right here, enables recognition of both the license plate and the driver's face. Yeah, when they're talking about parking garages, what they're talking about is actually speed cameras and all those other sorts of cameras where they're shooting into challenging, challenging situations with sunlight or sunset. So yay, yeah, positive all the time. That's great news, right? But seriously, let's take a look at this. This sensor is capable of delivering 24, 25, or 26 stops of dynamic range depending on what resolution it's shooting at and depending on the frame rate. And that's pretty impressive. We shouldn't... We shouldn't kind of poo-poo this and say, well, okay, it's for industrial designs. It doesn't really apply. Canon's learned an awful lot from doing this process from increasing dynamic range. And while the Canon EOS R5 currently has around 14 stops of dynamic range, I don't think it's improbable that we could see the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or even the Canon EOS R1 with 16, 17, or even 20 stops of dynamic range. 
but this will take some innovation. It'll also take producing sensors with backside illuminator or stack sensors, and Canon's shown they've done this. We've seen the Canon EOS R3 with a stack sensor, and if it's a stack sensor, that means it's also backside illuminated and stacked at the same time, whereas if it's just marketed as a BSI sensor, well, it's not stacked, and there's definite benefits and improvements to each. A stack sensor is more expensive to produce than a BSI sensor, but both produce faster processing and also better low light coverage. And because of the nature of a stack sensor, you're able to dramatically increase the level of processing, but it's really where you take that, well, backside illuminate, you're illuminating the sensor from the back, you're flipping things around, you're improving low light performance and you're able to improve dynamic range. So there's definitely improvements there. But what do you think? What do you think the Canon EOS R5 is gonna be able to do or Canon EOS R5 Mark II is going to be able to do in terms of dynamic range? What about the Canon EOS R1? Do you think we'll see 16 or 17 stops? We've seen this in cinema cameras. Canon can definitely do this. And I think 20 stops of dynamic range is technically possible as well. The only question is, is Canon gonna do this in a camera that costs around $4,000? Giving us somewhere between 16 and 20 stops of dynamic range. But what about the Canon EOS R1? Canon's soon to be released or announced flagship mirrorless full frame camera. Could that camera see 20 stops of dynamic range? Now, if I know how Canon's thinking, with the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, what I might do is boost up the dynamic range to around 16 stops, and then on the R1, boost it up even higher, maybe to 17 or even 20 stops of dynamic range. And that 20 mark, that's really significant because if you've got pretty decent eyesight when you're outside, looking on a bright summer day, or even today where it's beautiful, it's cold, but it's beautiful, it's bright, there's a lot of colors out there, there's a lot of dynamic range, Essentially, that's what your eyes are seeing with is around 20 stops of dynamic range. So getting a camera that can replicate that, that can replicate what film gave us many years ago, that to me is impressive. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, do yourself a favor as well as me by subscribing and choosing all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified by YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date on all the major camera news and rumors from all the major camera brands, not just Canon and Sony. And if you want to stay up to date on all the minor news and rumors from pretty well everything camera related or what my wife made me for breakfast this morning, then follow me on Twitter. And that's where I'll put out all the stories that aren't just big enough. They're, they're just not big enough for doing a separate video. And if you're interested in purchasing any camera gear, whether it's something I've talked about in this video or there's something you're about ready to go out and buy, please do me a favor. Consider using my affiliate links for b and and Amazon.com below because that really, it really is a big boost to this channel, along with your subscriptions, your likes, comments, and all that good stuff. It really does feed the YouTube algorithm and it helps this channel grow and there's no cost to you. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.